Good evening and welcome to the November 15th Board of Education meeting. If everyone could have a uh, stand for the Pledge to the Flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all right. Thank you. We will begin with the report of the superintendent, Dr. Byrne. Good evening and thank you for joining us for our November 15th Board of Education meeting. Uh, I was thrilled to be able to attend um, the ribbon cutting at Rye Recreation this afternoon and the ceremony honoring Sally Rogel on her retirement as Superintendent of Rec Recreation after 37 years of working in the department. Um, the park is beautiful. Um, Sally has done an incredible job and has been a great partner with the schools and I will, you know, on behalf of the school district take some credit for the changes in the park since uh, it was announced that the reason it all happened was because of our capital project and not being able to host camp uh, during uh, the summer when Midland was under complete gut renovation. So it's beautiful. Kudos to the city for getting it done. It's a beautiful facility and, and one that serves so many folks in the community and it was great to be there this afternoon. And uh, Jane, thank you for joining me. Tonight is one of two open topics forum nights that are offered annually. So I'll keep my report brief um, so we can conclude our business and get right to that. Our last board meeting was on October 25th. Since that time, we've been quite busy here in the district. And I'm happy to report that the Halloween parades at the elementary schools went off with no interference from Mother Nature. It was a little dicey at first, but, but turned out beautiful. And the annual Scare Fair fundraiser at Osborne School was a huge success. On November 7th and 8th, we hosted Dr. Denise Pope from Challenge Success at Stanford University Graduate School of Education. She spoke to our parents, high school students, and teachers at a variety of events over the course of two days, and I feel like she and her message were, were well received by all audiences. And last Tuesday on Election Day, the school district faculty, staff, and administrators convened for the uh, Professional Learning Day. It's our third of the year, the first two being prior to the start of school. And we're really focused on concrete ways to instill critical thinking into the classroom. Dr. Pope delivered a great keynote address to our secondary faculty and staff about supporting student engagement, and she held individual workshops for teacher groups. Our elementary faculty spent time developing a greater understanding of the science of reading and how our literacy program has incorporated this important research into our daily instruction. On Wednesday, we had a chance to celebrate eight of our senior student athletes who have signed letters of intent to play Division I sports at the collegiate and university level. Many of us also had a chance to attend an event later that evening hosted by the relaunched Rye Fund for Education. Last Friday on Veterans Day, the varsity football team played in the sectional championship for the second year in a row. Unfortunately, the team did not prevail against Somers, but we are so proud of the players who ended the season with an 8-2 and two record. And the heavy rain didn't really come until the fourth quarter, so it's actually not so bad for the first three quarters. Our next meeting will take place after the Thanksgiving break, so I'd like to take this opportunity to wish everyone a happy and healthy Thanksgiving. And that concludes my report for this evening. Great. Thank you. And it is nice to be able to say that because of the work of the district that the city was able to get two wins out of that, right? Then right. we got a great new redone school and a fantastic recreational facility for the entire community. A double win for everybody. Okay, we are going to have our open topics portion of the meeting tonight. The board will separate into small groups, which will uh, help to facilitate open discussion of, of topics on the minds of those of our audience members. Each group will record the topics of discussion, comments, suggestions, and questions, as well as a list of requests for information. After 30 minutes of group discussion, we will conclude and the board members will return to the seats and review for the whole audience and for each other what was discussed in the groups. In front of you, you have your packets board members. It has a note-taking sheet for you. Uh, the Board of Education will then provide a wrap-up and review 
and review how follow-up will take place if any is required, such as requests for information and requests that the board investigate a particular area. The regular meeting agenda will begin after that with no hearing of the public on non-agenda items of the agenda. So let's begin. Okay. All right, and we are back. Thank you. So we'll take this opportunity now to have, just share with each other what was uh, discussed at each of our tables. So Kelsey, would you like to go first? Sure. Um, so <clears throat> we had a parent um, raising a question about the FLESS program, so the foreign language in the elementary schools. Um, she's a parent who has uh, three children. One has gone through the elementary school, one is a fifth grader, and one is a current second grader. And um, just through observation, um, she has found that through her students, there's not a lot of engagement in the program. Um, there's a lot of resistance. And so, you know, in complaints, and even her um, student who moved on to the middle school um, you know, just said, I will never take Spanish again and has moved to a new language. So she wanted to just come and raise that observation um, and really just understand you know, how, how she should think about it, um, if the program had been reviewed, um, and you know, really what next steps would be. So um, we did let her know that a few years ago there was a full um, review of the world languages, um, which included um, you know, the FLESS programming. And that a lot that report really um, allowed a lot of changes to be made in the in the middle school and the high school based on the success of the Spanish program and sort of adapting the curriculum um, and letting her know that the best um, way to think about you know a, a particular program um, you know at her school was to potentially you know as a first step talk to the teacher um, really get a sense of understanding how her students could be supported talk to the administration um, you know the principal and really work through it um, to get information in that way and share her observations and you know start the process of conversation to understand you know what if any improvements could be made thank you Jen Boyle is going to report for her table. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to pass it along to who wants to take it. You took the best notes. Hey, well, <laughs> so we had a, um, a great discussion around um, the food choices at the elementary schools in mm -hmm. particular. Some questions are raised around Aramark um, and are they actually standing up to the standards we expect in the contract? Um, some questions about you know. A, a, the quality of food choices that are that are, are being offered, and, and some some good questions about who's who's paying attention and being on top of what the menu items that are being offered are. Yeah. I think that's the best summary yeah, I can I come think, up with. And, and um, the um, looking re looking at the wellness policy yeah. to see if that's being um, adhered to across the board. Okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, and we thank those from the public who were able to join us this evening. It's always nice when we're able to go out and have real uh, conversations, independent, individual, small table conversations to be able to connect with people about their thoughts regarding the work of the district. So thank you for that. And we look forward to hosting everybody again in March. I believe it's March, yes. I think it's March, so. Do you want to tell that there'll be a written response? Yes. Yeah. Yes, so as stated before, we will go ahead and we will uh, compile a list and comment suggestions and requests and that follow-up information will be shared and sent to those who are in attendance as well as posted to the website. Okay, there is no presentation and discussion this evening, so we will move to the consent agenda. So can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Vivek is our first. Second, Chris, let's take a look at the consent agenda. Consent agenda general. Dr. Murray, if you could just uh, speak for a few brief moments about what Dibble's training is. 
Sure, I would be happy to. Um, so we've been doing a lot of work this year um, with our connection with our work with Haskins Lab on data-based individualization. Um, you, that probably sounds familiar because our AIS teachers were uh, trained the last couple of years, and this year we're training our special education teachers. So a really big part of that in order to progress monitor kids frequently is that you need an assessment that's going to do the kind of progress monitoring that we need. So that would be the Dibbles assessment. Um, so we trained the special education teachers in that um, because as they work with um, Dr. Kearns from Haskins this year, they need a tool to use. Uh, training went really well and the teachers have already started implementing it. Fantastic. That's the best acronym I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Love the dibbles. You like dibbles? I like dibbles. It's fun to say. All right. Uh, consent agenda fiscal construction. So I'm just going to say there are a bunch <laughs> of change orders and yes, allowance there authorizations are. for um, the board's sign off and approval, um, which is a good sign because we are coming to the end of phase two. Um, you will see um, credit change orders, um, quite a few listed there, which basically um, it are the allowances, which if everyone remembers, are the anticipated surprises that are built into the overall contract amount that our um, contractors include in their bid when they submit them that were not utilized and the only way to reduce a contract amount or increase a contract amount for that matter is via change order. So many of the credits are related to the allowance authorizations that or the allowances that were built into contracts that were not utilized so now that money is coming back to the district. Fantastic. Does that make sense? Yes. And Oh, sorry. So just one other um, question. So how, how close do you feel like we are to sort of a reconciliation on, or having a, um, an understanding of the, where we are at the end of this phase? So there are two locations that I would say that there is still um, some larger pieces of work that have to be completed before I can um, fairly say that I have a final number, if you will. Okay. So that would be at this location, the high school, middle school, as well as Osborne, where there is still ongoing work that um, will impact the bottom line before I can come back to the board with a final number for okay. phase two to say complete. Okay, thank you. Um, and there, I just had one question on um, an allowance authorization mm -hmm. for 25000 that seemed like it might have been a change in scope. So just trying to revisit um, the allowance authorization versus change orders and how they work. So, so allowance authorizations are um, anticipated scope of work that we think we may utilize as part of a project. I use the typical example of asbestos removal. When you're talking about buildings of the age in which we have, it is very likely that you will come across a certain circumstance that will then require some additional work. So asbestos removal is one of those things. So we build in an allowance to say, okay, contractor, knowing the scope of work that we're giving you, if asbestos should come up, we want you to give us a, a and in, in for for asbestos, it's typically done by the square foot. Mm -hmm. Anticipating the amount of space that you're going to be covering, give us an allowance for asbestos removal. So we'll carry a number like $25,000 to be used should we encounter this specific circumstance that they can automatically then um, utilize those funds for. Right. So then if you do not encounter that asbestos, you then, we then get that money back. Mm -hmm. So it's included as part of the whole contract amount, but it's never utilized. So therefore it comes back to the district in a credit. Right. And it reduces the overall contract amount. So this particular one, it, it notes it's 
a full utilization of the abatement allowance um, to apply towards replacement of MS doors leading to West Courtyard. So I was just trying to understand how that wouldn't convert to a change order or and just making sure I understand how things are because we have such fantastic organization of all of this from your team so making sure I understood it so that was an example of one I saw for approval that didn't make sense to me in the context of what did I you're saying did I answer you um well I guess how doors leading to a courtyard relate to asbestos abatement that 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 doesn't seem so the, ga the description, Gabby, is full utilization of unused abatement allowance to apply towards replacement of middle school doors leading to the west courtyard. And it's categorized as an unknown discovered condition. Right. And the $25,000. So $25. they came across asbestos in that scope of work? In the doors. Correct. Or the framing around it or the immediate Caulking. area where they encountered asbestos that then we had to stop what we were doing, okay. abate that asbestos, which is very typical that you will come across conditions like that and then have to, and that's why then you build in funds for those very things because asbestos can waylay an entire summer if you're not prepared to deal with immediately a, a, a condition like that because then that means also that the general contractor has an asbestos contractor waiting in the wings ready to go when you encounter something like that going into a project you do as much asbestos testing as you possibly can knowing the areas in which you're going to touch but there's no guarantee that you are uncovering all of those conditions going into a construction project. We try to do as much as we possibly can, but we too work very closely with our asbestos contractor who comes through and identifies all of these locations so that we're prepared when something like that happens. It's unfortunately very typical. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. Gabby, if I may just circle back to the point where you said there's still uh, significant work here at Osborne and at the middle school and the high school. Correct. Is this work that, um, is, is some of it delayed due to materials and those kinds yeah. of issues? So, so we Osborne, really can't get a general sense of a timeline for when? Correct. And okay. there are some, so at Osborne, it, it's a lot with having to do with the door replacement. That is one thing that has been a very difficult task across the board where we're just not able to get our hands on the doors that we need. All of the interior interior doors as part of the Osborne scope were being replaced. We've been delayed, delayed, delayed. We're actually in the process of trying to see if we can source through uh, multiple manufacturers to get the doors that we need to complete that project. I suspect that because we're going back out to the market right now, that could translate into a change order. So that is one of those items where there's still a question mark associated with it. In the high school, middle school in particular, there's some roof work that um, came up as part of the work that we did, really having to do with the stone walls that or this, this building is beautiful in stone, but some undiscovered conditions there that we're still trying to grapple with on how to deal with that um, and closing up the roof here. So those are two big things that are still not done that I, I don't feel comfortable saying that I can put pencils down yep. and give you a solid number of where we've landed. No, it's helpful to understand kind of the, uh, the, the scope of what's still out there to understand yep. the delays. One final question. Yeah. So the 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 roof piece that you just described here. Yes. Mm -hmm. That um, was part of the original scope of the bond. Yes. Or okay. So, so roof. It wasn't something that came up after. And no. Okay. Roof. We had always intended to replace a portion of the roof here at the high school. It actually had gravel on it and like those big yeah dishes and yep. whatnot. So in doing that, right and. Our, our building is beautiful, but there's a lot of old stonework, which we all witnessed down here. Yes. So when you start messing with the roof and where it 
comes into contact the with the seams. Yeah, I yeah. Get and it. I'm not doing it justice. I hope <laughs> yeah. nobody from the contractors is listening to me. But kind of like the way the walls kind of meet where yep. the roof is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the flashing around that. Yep. So it's compromised and you can't just put it back the way right. we thought we were going to but now the recipe of trying to fix it is a little bit more complicated than what a normal roof would look like that right. didn't have stone from 1930 right. to deal with i just wanted to clarify that it wasn't as part that it wasn't discovered as part of other work that was being no. done on the stone. The roof that, was always that, that intended. That had to get. Okay. Yes, and unfortunately, similar to the asbestos, you can do so much testing. Right. But it's not until you really uncover what you're working on do you know the full condition of what you're dealing with. Right. And that happens quite often. Yes. As a, as a person who lives in an old house, I'm fully fully aware. Right. <laughs> old stone. <laughs> old brick house. Uh, but, you know, same thing. <laughs> it's old. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, consent agenda fiscal. And for this, I believe we have a speaker in the audience who would like to say something about this section of the agenda. Consent agenda fiscal. Mr. Boylan? Thank you very much. Certainly. Jim Boylan, Midland School, um, 312 Midland Avenue. Um, <laughs> uh, I just wanted to take a moment and thank the Midland PTO. I know all the schools, PTOs do so much for all the schools, uh, all the activities and events that they sponsor. So. Uh, there's been one recent sizable donation on, on behalf of the Midland PTO, which I think you guys are going to accept, uh, which is going to be used for flexible classroom furniture for third, fourth, and fifth grade, 14 classrooms at all, you know, all at Midland School. And I just wanted to thank the PTO and our parent community for their support, ongoing support and enthusiasm for all we do at Midland School. So thank you, Midland PTO. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. Any questions related to consent agenda fiscal? Consent agenda professional appointments? Consent agenda classified appointments? Consent agenda special education? Okay, seeing none, let's, uh, can I have a vote for approval of the consent agenda? Everyone in favor? That's five, nothing. Consent agenda is approved. This evening on our consent agenda, some highlights for everybody. Our safety plan um, was approved. We appreciate the continued commitment to our student and staff safety in our buildings. Feeling safe allows our students the opportunity to engage with learning and allows the staff to be able to focus on our students' learning. And so we greatly appreciate the support of the district in ensuring that those things are able to happen. Professional learning, there was quite a bit on our agenda this evening. Our, for reading, Denise Pope with Challenge Success, Wellness, DBT and Special Education, Dibbles. Uh, these are key elements. Uh, professional learning is a key element of our commitment in the RIE commitment and through this work um, our students are able to benefit as we continue to support the professional growth of our staff and it's a lot of work and it is greatly appreciated and it makes a big difference. The Osborne PTO was generous this evening as well providing money for field trip and visiting authors providing enrichment opportunities for our students to allow them to take their understanding and their learnings in the classroom outside and to be able to really make connections from the classroom walls to the to the real world. The Milton PTO is also um, providing money this evening for cultural enrichment as well as for the recess program which allows for big muscle movement which allows for learning in the classroom to take place because as we all know if you haven't had a chance to get your wiggles out you are not going to be able to pay attention <laughs> and learn anything that your wonderful science of reading teachers are trying to teach you. So we greatly appreciate the support from the Milton PTO. Mr. Boylan already spoke about the very generous donations from the Midland PTO for classroom furniture. As we heard uh, from Gabby talking about all of the work with the bond, we know how important our um, actual learning instructional spaces are and there's a clear connection between the space in the classroom and our students learning. So we greatly appreciate the Midland PTO for helping the district with that. 
Our award-winning high school yearbook is on our agenda this evening as well. It's a culmination of our memories for our students. And we know our students work very hard at really creating an unbelievable yearbook that is in fact truly award-winning. I'm being serious when I yes. say that, not snarky, I promise. So we appreciate that. Um, this evening there was also with the squash merger and I really do want to highlight this as the dedication from our athletic department to find solutions for our students to be able to ensure just as they did with the uh, women's ice hockey that students who have an interest and have a passion in a sport that perhaps is not something as mainstream or typical that there is work being done to make sure that they can have that as part of their high school experience and so that's greatly appreciated. The literacy and science committees again this is our teacher committees that are working to review enhance our learning for our students. This is work that they are doing outside of their instructional day and so the district is really um, the board is really happy that we have teachers that are so committed to helping our students learn. Uh, so that is everything I, oh no, 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 sorry. We also have a personal uh, donation from the Grafspeck Fazilari family to support the wrestling program. And so we also greatly appreciate their uh, support of our student athletes and again in a sport that is really starting to come into its own here at the Rye City Schools and so we appreciate their support for that program. That being said, that is the consent agenda, and so we are going to move on. We do not have a presentation and discussion number two, but we do have a policy conversation. So for that, I will turn it over to Jen Burrell. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so on our agenda tonight, we have one policy for information and discussion. It is policy 5225, which is student personal expression. And this was um, a, an update that was recommended um, through NISBA, the New York State School Boards Association. Um, and m much of the reflections of the changes are um, related to uh, current uh, uh, um, Supreme Court decisions um, regarding student personal expression and what the First Amendment and what their constitutional rights protect them from, what they don't protect them from, and so this is just updating that language um, to be reflected in our policy. So, um, if anyone has any questions, happy to answer. No, I read it, it all seemed to make sense. It was, Excellent. <laughs> seemed like very straightforward changes. Yes. Thank yeah. you for the work on that. You're welcome. Um, so if there are no other questions related to it, we will then have this appear on our next agenda for um, approval. Great. Yes. Thank you very much. Do we have any communications to and from the board? No. Okay. Well, our next uh, Board of Education meeting, as Dr. Byrne mentioned earlier, will be after the Thanksgiving holiday. So we will see you all here on November 29th, where we will have a uh, robust conversation, I'm sure, related to social and emotional learning. Thank you all for coming this evening. Can I have a vote to adjourn the meeting? Chris Repetto, seconded by Kelsey Johnson. All those in favor? Five nothing. Thank you very much. Have a great Thanksgiving. <laughs>